The Fletcher-Munson curve was uh, created by Bell Labs in the 30s. And what they were, and this is it. What they were trying to do was figure out how to transmit a phone call cheaply. Because so they said, well, we got to figure out how people hear sound. So what we're made to hear is the beginning of a word. Now, coincidentally, musical instruments also work exactly the same way. There's an attack sound that's between one and five kilohertz, and a note or a tone that happens down lower. Well. Your brain is designed to trigger off of those high frequencies. The, when it hears ch, the brain says, ah, there's something important that's going to follow that. So that's why when things are muff, muffled and dull, you have a hard time understanding them because you need the high frequencies to trigger your brain to follow what's coming next. And when you take that away, it's hard to understand what's going on because you, you, you need that trigger. And it's true of music. If you, you know, like uh, any bass players in here? What's the difference between playing bass with a pick and playing with your thumb? Louder, but also easier to hear. Like if you play the pick, tick, 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 you, can, you can hear the notes because the, picks, the pick makes a one to five kilohertz click before the, the notes that we don't hear very well. But if you play with your thumb, there isn't one. And all of a sudden, there's no trigger that allows you to hear what's coming next. So it makes the bass harder to hear. And then it feels like it's not loud enough, so you end up turning it up because... But that's why. It has to do with the attack sound. Some of these things are so intriguing to me that you can tell just from that chart. Consonants are between 1 and 5 kilohertz. The fundamentals of speech are between 1 and 500. There are resonance frequencies that help you determine what a voice is or what a sound is. And music and speech work exactly the same way. This is a, a thing that happened to me over years of reading acoustics books. The, the vast majority of acoustics books don't talk about music. They talk about speech. And I thought, well, this is great. I'm in a, I'm in a band, you know. I want to know how to make the band sound good. And all they're talking about is if you're in an office and the, uh, the sound decibel level of the air conditioning equipment, you're like, oh, that doesn't help me. But I realized after uh, literally decades of reading about this stuff, once I really started recording and looking at the frequencies that, that all the instruments make, I realized they work exactly like speech, exactly. So all the things that they were talking about in those acoustics books applies to music too. This is my Les Paul, through uh, Kevin, a half stack, Marshall half stack, the, the low E, played with a pick, through an SM57, and recorded into Pro Tools. So the, and this is a frequency plot. Now, actually, what happened is, I went, you know, with the, and I, I actually held my hand up like this. But what happened is, <laughs> this part happens first. Or oh, part of it. It's all kind of mishmashed together, but this didn't all happen at once. First, there's the ch sound of the pick, and then row is all these other frequencies along here. But, but amazingly, your brain does this with all of the sounds that are all happening at once. It strips off the lowest frequency, which in the case of a guitar tuned to E is 80 hertz. So it takes off the lowest frequency and says, that's an E. And then it looks at the relative volumes of all those harmonics, which by the way are all multiples of 80, and it says that's an electric guitar. Because you could have somebody sing the same note, could you tell that there were two things? Right? You could. I mean, they don't become one sound. You hear a person singing and a guitar playing, even though it's the same note. This is remarkable to me. It was like the, you know, the more I studied science, the more I believed in God. Because instead of the other way around, I, I thought, oh, this is just amazing. I was a computer science guy. I wrote software, and I thought, you, we could never write software that could do this kind of stuff. I mean, just think about what's playing in a band. You know, think about a band or an orchestra all playing at once. 
and you're processing the high frequencies as attack sounds, followed by the low frequencies as notes and tones. You're stripping off the bass frequency of every single sound and saying what, that's the note they're playing. Then you're comparing the volumes of all the resonant frequencies to determine the instruments that are playing them. All in the 30,000th of a second. It's pretty cool. So we're using these harmonics to tell what things are. Not just, you know, it's not just about this frequency down here. This is how you tell the note. But all of these are how you determine what it is. So all of those things are important. Any questions so far? Does anybody's head spin around there? Because I've got a few nods, that's good. For sound guys, that's like huge. If they're like, you know you're on. 